no pain, no gain. Yeah. But we don't want to go through that. And it's easier to blame people rather than to take responsibility for where you are. There's a, there comes a time in your life where you stop blaming your parents, you stop blaming your boss, you stop blaming your spouse, and you start looking at yourself and saying, how can I be a better person? How can I change? How can I grow? How can I reach my potential? How can I realize my dreams? And I said, again, identity has a big role in that. If you don't know who you are, you're going to be people, people pleasing day in and day out. And that's draining. Because by the time mm -hmm. you go home, you're going to be miserable because you've pleased everybody else. You've emptied yourself everywhere. But what do you invest and put back into you? And we've, we've seen this generation coming behind us that struggle with reading. They struggle with reading. So it's easier to TikTok and, and which is wonderful because technology has taken us so much further in terms but of accessing information. It decreases information. attention span. It decreases. And if we're not paying attention, we're going to miss those things in our lives that need to be changed and enhanced. Because I believe every person on this planet has something to offer in terms of value, in terms of gifting, in terms of ability. But why do we have hobos and why do we have CEOs that maybe came from similar backgrounds? Why, why is that? I mean, that's a good question. Why do we have them? Why, why do we have the exact same people? Obviously not the exact same. Yes. But they have the exact same background. set of circumstances, the exact same background. Sometimes in some circumstances, the exact same set of parents. Yes. But one will be catapulted to high, higher heights of success because of what they went through, mm -hmm. and the other will be dejected and discouraged because of what they've went through. I think it's the power of choice. We abscond from that because we realize that <laughs> we are choosing these micro decisions are contributing to the macro decisions that we make every single day in terms of doing right and wrong, in terms of um, changing and growing or staying stagnant in terms of overcoming or remaining defeated. And so we realize that even a no, no decision is a decision. We were wanting to accept, ah, oh, this is mm. my lot in life. No decision is a decision? No decision is a decision because you're choosing to accept this is my lot in life and there's nothing more or better. So if I, if I came from a background where my, for instance, I mentioned abuse, I was transparent about that, Abuse is very prevalent in our cultures and in our society today, whether it be spousal abuse, child abuse, um, substance abuse, it's very prevalent. And we see the effects on society. It's draining society. It's draining people. Suicide rates are up. Um, that has a lot of contribution to even um, relationships in terms of stability, et cetera. And so I'm saying, do these circumstances define me? No. If I've made mistakes in my life, I've met, I've encountered so many people that have come out of substance abuse. They aren't the people that they were yesterday or five years ago, 10 years ago, because it's progressive and saying, I messed up then, but that failure is not going to define me. That incident, that trauma, that abuse, that poverty, that um, lack of knowledge, lack of education is not going to define me. Today, I'm making a decision to say, I want change. And these are the steps that I'm going to take. Are you going to encounter... Uh, are we going to encounter challenges? Yes, some more than others, especially if you come from a disadvantaged background. But I'm saying where there's a will, there's a way. And the problem is that we give up too easily um, with regards to evolving, changing, and making decisions that are informed, number one, and decisions that are really going to better ourselves and our children. Um, and the next generation, um, the next generation of attorneys, I find in my profession, <laughs> people um, are liken us to sharks. If you look at the large majority of the public that we encounter, they don't trust attorneys. Because they say, no, these guys, no, they're liars. Lawyers are liars. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've determined to live my life as a Christian attorney, which is an oxymoron, saying I'm going to walk in truth. I'm going to do what is right. And that takes a level of intentionality. You think about a child. I've got three children. My, my son is four months. I've got a five-year-old and a seven-year-old. So uh, we have um, chaotic and order. And you're a director. And, and a director. Where do you get the time? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, we've got, we all got 24 hours in a day, but what we do with it is important. And that really distinguishes those that are able to overcome and those that are willing to just sit and time you're never going to get back. 
And I keep on reminding myself of that. I'm never going to get this day back. And what I do with it is going to help me with tomorrow. And so we can waste today and find ourselves sitting in the same circumstances. Um, there's a story in the Bible about these lepers and they were sitting and they were hungry and they were starving. And, you know, they were willing to sit there. And one of them said, no, man, if we sit here, we die. But if we get up and go into the city, we will, we will, there's a chance that we can survive. And what happened? They survived. They lived because they got up out of their circumstances. They didn't accept, ah, oh, we're lepers, number one. The order of the day at that time, if you were a leper, you weren't allowed to be in contact with people. You had to be outside of the city. They had special camps for them, certain areas. You know, I'm just paraphrasing mm. the word. Um, but they said, no, I'm not going to sit here. I'm not going to allow my race group, my background, my socioeconomic standings to be my, what I accept in my life as the status quo. I want to supersede that because there's opportunities out there, but there's certain beliefs, there's certain real challenges that we've gone through. But I love to hear Victor's story. I don't know about you. Mm. I don't want to hear how someone lost and stayed losing. I want to hear how someone lost, was losing, and now they turned it around for victory. And we can define what that victory looks like. Trying again, overcoming self-doubt, saying yes to a risk or something that's new, being brave, being courageous, saying no to what is wrong, saying no to the fact that I'm not gonna be abuser, I'm not gonna be a woman beater, I'm not gonna be a drug addict, I'm not gonna be living in poverty, because I say each one of us contribute to society and if we can contribute in every little small way, it's going to make the difference. But we in this, mi this mindset, we believe ah, I don't, what I have to offer is not really worth it. It's not going to change the world that I'm living in. And I'm saying, number one, I'm an attorney. I have a set of skills. I have a, I've got knowledge that I've gained over this time. How am I going to use that every day to contribute to people's lives and bring change? whether it be on a pro bono basis or whether it be writing fees to mm. satisfy a client's need. Um, same with a mother. When I go home, how am I contributing to my, I can be this brilliant attorney, but I go home and I'm stressed and I'm, so I need to, I need to fashion my life in such a way that I have boundaries in place, number one. And number two, I'm saying, this is the different roles that I fulfill. But in order for me to fulfill these roles, I need to invest into myself. How do I invest as a mother? How do I invest as a wife? How do I invest as a director? I can't be coming here into my place of employee and shouting at people because of what happened at home. 